Hey there, it's Katrina from Paper Scissors Glue and Hybrid 2, and I'm here to share a layout for the Thermal Web Waffle Flower Crafts team up. I've used lots of fun Thermal Web products such as Purple Tape, the Memory Runner XL, 3D foam squares, photo corners. Yeah, I'm going to try to bring them back, people. Some flock transfer sheets, the foam adhesive from Deco Foil, and the peel and stick toner sheets. And then I've used a lot of fun Waffle Flower stamps and dies. I, this is the Magnolia stamp set. I also use the XOXO stamp set along with the tile panel die and the nesting hearts dies. A um, little tip if you want to use these on layouts, just cut them out of cardstock so you have your sizes and you can see how they'll fit on your layout. Next up, I'm just going to show you quickly how I watercolored all my images that I stamped um, for my layout. I first stamped the images with um, Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink and Whisper onto 140 pound watercolor paper. I then taped that paper down to the Waffle Flower Water Media Mat with some purple tape. The first thing you do is you lay in water if you want a wet on wet look. And I'm not an expert in this by any means, so please don't take this to heart. Um, just kind of search YouTube for some tutorials on the on the watercoloring. I lay in a light wash of color. Uh, watercoloring is all about layering, so you kind of have to be patient, which I'm learning. So I laid in a light wash of pink and then I laid in a little bit darker pink and then I took my heat tool and dried it for this for the sake of speeding up the video. Normally I would let these flowers air dry. I stamped like a whole sheet of them and I worked on them one at a time and just let them air dry and then went back and did the next layer. Um, this is just kind of speeding up the process. I think this whole process was about 15 minutes and it took me a couple hours to watercolor the, the flowers that are on my layout. So then I put in a little bit darker color after it dries a little bit and you pull that out. You can add water to it um, to change your color values of your watercolor paints. Just add more water. The more water you get, the lighter of a color you get. Right here, I've added another color that was just a little bit darker and I'm taking a tissue and just daubing off the extra. And then I started on the leaves, um, or in the stem, I think that's what it is. And you just, same thing, you can see here how the, I added more water to make it a little lighter. And you'll notice that there's another flower stamped up in the corner. That flower was actually, um, I actually did the same process, but my video was corrupted. So it's going to show you how different it looks when it's wet compared to when it's dry. Um, I did the same process for the other flower that's on this page, but this flower has dried completely overnight. So there's a huge difference I'm going to show you here. Um, you can just kind of see the difference. So here's all my images cut out. I love these. They're so fun. Um, I did the leaves. I did the flowers. Um, and I just cut out, die cut them out after I watercolored them and had a lot of fun with them. Um, I also, on the flowers, I added some uh, white accents with a, with a white gel pen. One note, you need to make sure that your watercolor paper is completely dry, like let it dry overnight before you add those accents. Next up, I die cut some of the leaves from the matching dies out of Decofoil foam adhesive. And we're going to cover those with the Decofoil flock transfer sheets. When you peel your uh, backing layer off, be very careful not to stretch the foam because it will stretch. But I just used a piece of scrap flock that I had. Um, I had tested some stuff on this, just seeing how it would look. But I love the variegated look it gives to the leaves. It's not, it's super subtle. You can't really see it, but I'm using up scraps and not wasting product. So that's one of my favorite things. You just run those through a couple of times. And then again, when you peel these from the flock sheet, be very careful not to stretch them. And here are some of my leaves and our next step, we're gonna stamp on them. So I made sure to save the scrap pieces where I had die cut out my leaves from the deco foil foam adhesive. And I'm gonna use that as people say, as a jig in my Misty to re-stamp on the flock. So here I'm just putting it back in where it was and I've lined up my stamp already. I kind of did that before I film the video part and I ink my stamp up and I just flip it over and stamp and it stamps perfectly on that flock. I love the look. I think it's a great way to do some fun things. I can't wait to try it more. This was the first time I had tried it. So I was pretty super excited about it. Now I'm going to do another one and I'm actually going to um, do some generation stamping. I didn't even think about it when I did it. I just thought that there was probably enough ink on my stamp. So I replaced that back in there and I stamped down and it just gives a lighter look and I liked the way that turned out. I think um, I'll be doing a lot more of that. It's very subtle. It's very delicate and I thought that was a neat look.
So here are all the pieces that I had die cut out and adhered the flock to the die cut piece and, and then stamped. And I love this look. I can't, they were so fun to use on my layout. Next up, we're going to do a little die cutting and stamping and foiling with the peel and stick toner sheets from Deco Foil and then the Waffle Flower Craft stamps and dies. So here I'm pulling out the Deco Foil toner sheet. It's got adhesive on the back and we do have ones that are do not have adhesive. Um, I've cut two of the tie panel dies out of white cardstock and then I cut another one out of the toner sheet. I really just wanted the insides of the tile die so I'll save that piece there for the front of a card or another layout. And then I've also die cut some of the stems from the XOXO stamp set because I want to foil them and then I'm going to stamp on them. So here I'm getting ready to laminate them. I, la I use the foil color Pink Quartz, which I love. It's a light pink, soft pink color, um, similar to a mauve, but not quite. It's not bright and it doesn't detract from your, from your project. So before I foil, I like to rub um, them down with a microfiber cloth just to get any dirt or oil from my fingers or if the to toner sheet's been sitting out. That kind of thing get all that off so that my foil adheres the way i want it to and usually when i foil the toner sheets i run them through twice i don't know if it's necessarily necessary but for me it's just habit i run them through once face up and then i turn flip them over and run them once face down um, it just helps me in my thinking process I think. So here I'm doing the inside um, cuts of the tie panel die and I love these little gold pieces. I Luckily I foiled just enough to use. I thought I had not done that. So but then I put everything into a little bowl so I can find it later to use on my layout. So next we're going to stamp on those foiled stems and we're going to do the same process as we did with this the leaves from the magnolia set. We're going to use that toner sheet that I cut them out of as a jig to reposition the die cut piece in there because I'm going to stamp on these and then I'm going to heat emboss. So I've put those in there and I'm positioning my stamps and I actually position my stamps just a little off from the actual die cut because I didn't, I wanted a little of that foil to show through. So I take my Versamark ink. So I start inking up my stamps with that Versamark ink and it, you know, it's super sticky. So sometimes the pieces will come up. That's why it's nice to use that jig. So I get those, I stamp it twice, and then I'm going to put some white um, Hero Arts embossing powder on there. Um, you can use any embossing powder you want. It might be kind of cool with green, um, just a thought. But make sure that's all good and um, melted down. You can tell by the way it gets shiny. And then look at the shine with that foil and that embossing powder. I think it's just a neat look. Here's where I bring back the photo corners, people. I pulled these out of my stash thinking I wanted to use them on this layout and in a fun and unique way. I decided to use the ivory ones and personalize them to my layout. So I used a dis Distress Oxide. I think it's worn lipstick. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't use Distress inks that much, so I'm not sure what the color is. And used a blender brush on it and just blended that color on there. And then I cut a piece of cardstock that I think was 11 and a half by 11 and a half. Cut the middle out of it so I could use that part for later adhered that down to my background piece with some my Memory Runner XL. And then I attached my photo corners to my white piece of cardstock that I cut at 10 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. The back of the photo corners are adhesive, of course, and I wasn't sure if I was going to move this layer around or not. So I decided a little bit of purple tape would be great to cover up that adhesive and allow me to move that piece around in case I wanted to. A lot of times I pop up my layers with foam tape and I wasn't sure if I was going to do that on this or not. So once I decided to adhere that down, I used my Memory Runner XL, of course. And now I'm going to start working on building my layout. I took my two white tie panel dies that I cut out of cardstock. And I'm going to adhere those behind my photo. Um, if you noticed, um, the Ultra Hold glue had a little metal tip on it. Those are new from Thermal Web. I will link them below. Um, that is an affiliate link, but um, they're tips that you can just screw on the top of your, your glue bottle and not have to transfer it over to a smaller one or to a different bottle. So they're awesome. They just came out. Um, they're on the website. So I adhered that down and I had it right the first time. I don't know what I was thinking, but I kept thinking, no, I need to flip this panel. No, I need to flip that panel. Um, I started to edit this part out, but I wanted you to see that everybody makes mistakes and we're pulling stuff up and rearranging it too. So once I got that down and got it, it positioned how I wanted it, 
Um, then I started filling in those cor the little corner pieces into the little open areas that were cut out that I had foiled. And I had an idea in mind when I foiled them. And luckily I have foiled just enough pieces. I think I had one left over, but I didn't want to fill everything. I kind of wanted a mosaic look to it. So I just put all those in there that they would be in there and I wouldn't lose them again. And then I'm going to continue building my layout. I start, um, these are the peel and stick toner sheets, of course. So I start removing the backing and applying them to my layout. And I didn't want to push, put you guys through all that peeling of the adhesive stickers off. So I've edited that part out and we'll come back and I'll be almost done putting those down. And I don't have any nails. So I was having a little trouble getting those off. My nails are horrible right now. So I've got most of them laid down and I'm just adding those last two. Now I'm going to start working on building my layout and where I want my embellishments and my stamped die cut images and all that. And for me, this is the most fun part of doing a layout is trying to figure out where I want everything. I do a lot of moving. I do a lot of clustering and saying, no, I don't like the way that looks. Oh, I th and you'll notice at the end, none of this looks like it does right now. So I just continue to to add little pieces here and there. That's that foiled and embossed stem that um, I had cut out. And I'm putting those down and I do not adhere anything until I get ready to actually be done with my project. I pulled in some of the die cuts from the collection that I'm using. Um, in case you're wondering, it's Jelly Bean Soup uh, Spoonful of Soul, I think. And I really wanted to tie a few of those in, but I wanted the main focus to be on the watercolored images and of course my picture. That's my bag of scraps. So I put everything into a little baggie that I've die cut out of adhesive. So like my deco foil foam sheets, cause I use those a lot. I'll put all my scraps in there and then I'll just trim them and, and use them on the back of my projects, on the back of my embellishments of my projects. They're a little bit thinner, so they give a little bit different dimension. Sometimes I'll double them up. Um, that foil toner sheet, you can see it just, you just peel the backing off of it and you adhere it down. And now I'm going to use some 3D foam squares on my picture. I always like to pop my pictures up. Um, it's kind of what scrapbooking is about is the memories and the pictures and that kind of thing. I didn't used to journal. Now I do journal. But I like for my pictures to stand out. I don't like for them to just blend into my layout. So I usually do pop them up with some kind of, of dimensional adhesive. And the 3D foam squares are perfect for that. And, of course, they're acid-free, so I don't mind attaching them to my pictures or like anything like that. So I start adhering my watercolored images. And watercolor paper is a lot thicker. And then I was like, oh, I need to add a little bit more dimension. So this layout does have a lot of dimension to it because I did use the 3D foam squares plus the watercolor paper. And I had popped my pictures up also. But my albums are pretty chunky. I'll just, I'll just admit that right now. So I keep tucking stuff in and trying to figure out where it's going to go. I do fuss a lot. Um, I'll move stuff until I like the way it looks. That stem that I flocked just peel off the back and stick it down. I love that. Um, no fuss, no mess, just lay it down. And so once I get that top corner kind of the way I want it, then I start working on the bottom corner just so that I can have an even kind of look to my layout and I can kind of even things out. So I pretty much got that down. So now I'm going to start working on the bottom corner. And I adhere, use some of the Memory Runner XL on that watercolor paper to attach that flower to my picture. And it works great on watercolor paper. Even though it's textured and thicker, it was awesome. It, it stuck really well. And I actually just used a little bit of it on the back of those petals. And then I folded them up just for some dimension. I'm tucking in those foam leaves that I had flocked and stamped. And just tucking them in, tucking little bits and pieces here and there. Just trying to get a look I like. Um, if you have any questions down below, just leave them for me and I'll try to answer them for you. I use a lot of foam adhesive, so I can give you a lot of tips on that. And don't be afraid to put your embellishments down and then move them around. If you don't really press down, you can pretty usually pretty much pull them up a little bit without ruining them. I also am not afraid to cut embellishments if they're not tucking in exactly how I want them. And I did that a couple of times here. So I'm just tucking in the last little bits. And now I've decided to add some jewels. And um, these are from Ink Road. Um, I don't can't remember the color, but they went perfectly with the 
paper collection. I just wanted to add them to the centers of that die cut panel just to give a little sparkle and a little bling and that sort of thing. And that needle, that metal tip for, that we just came out with for the glue is perfect for those. You can just tack it down and you don't get too much glue running out the sides or anything. It's the perfect little fine tip amount. So right here, I'm about to wrap up adding things to my layout. I'm just kind of finishing up. I added a little tag that says today at the top. And then I decided I wanted to add a heart. And this is where cutting out those nesting dies in cardstock and just keeping them with your dies is awesome for scrapbooking because I'm a horrible judge of size and I can just take one out and figure out the size I need. So I'm going to go through and do that with all my nesting dies. So I figure out that I need what size I need. And then I decide I'm going to watercolor a heart with some distress oxide ink and then some of my watercolors that I use to color my flowers. So I tape that die down with some purple tape and I make sure that it's just on the edge of the die. It's not covering the inside of the die. I wet my paper down first and I start with a layer of the, the pink distress oxide ink and then I start picking up some of my watercolor with that blender brush and just blending. And remember I said watercolor works best in layers. So here in a minute, you'll see me grab the heat tool and I will dry it um, so that I can add another layer. Warning, do not touch the dye after you have used your heat gun on it. Just word of caution from experience. So I just continue to build those layers and I'm looking and I'm like, mm, I don't know if I really want it that pink. So I add a little bit of yellow, which pink and yellow kind of make an orange color. So I just add a little bit and then I dry it and then I'm going to, I'll die cut it out once it's completely dried. And I, I added a little bit more pink because it was just a little bit too orange for me. After I got the heart die cut out, I decided I wanted to add some polka dots to it. So I just used my white gel pen to add a, several dots. I started out with a few, but it ended up with several. Making sure to just press lightly so that the ink would flow out of my gel pen. And I'm finishing up here. I've added a couple more. I kind of went over some that had dried and weren't quite filled in. I'm going to tuck it in up in that corner. I'm going to attach some 3D foam squares of the back of it to the back of it to make it pop up a little bit. And I'll fold the corner um, side of the heart to kind of make it stand up. And then I found a label in the paper collection that I thought would be cute to use on there for good times. Um, this was, we went to the Cardigan Welsh Corgi Nationals. It's nothing but a week of Cardigan Welsh Corgis. And these are our friends from Arkansas. And we were just taking a break in the air conditioning and hanging out and letting the dogs have a drink of water. And we decided to take a selfie. And um, the little tag says good times. And that's the end of my layout. Thanks for joining me here on the Thermal Web YouTube channel for the Waffle Flower Crafts team up. I really enjoyed this layout and I will link all my supplies below so you can create your own version. If you have any questions, just leave them below. Thanks.